Amen. Okay, so we talked about keys to power. We're just going to talk a little bit today about some more things that I believe the Bible says and some, also some things that I've personally learned how to stay in the game and stay in the fight. You know, it's not necessarily how you start, but it's how you finish. And I have to sort of chuckle. Now I've been married for 20 years, and I have to sort of chuckle. You know, everybody puts so much into the wedding that, that they want the perfect wedding, the perfect wedding. And, and, and that's great. You want the perfect wedding? That's great. But that perfect wedding's not going to keep you in the hard times. You're going to forget about that wedding. You got to be you got to be concerned to keep running, to keep staying in the game. It's easy to start off big with a big hurrah, but when the going gets tough, which it always will, because life is full of challenges and unexpected twists and turns. We've got to learn how to keep going. And that's where accessing the power of God comes in in the day to day when we get hit with stuff. How do we keep going? How do we keep up our faith? What do we do when we don't necessarily see exactly what we want? We know God has more, but we're not seeing it yet. What do you do to press through and to keep going? And that's where the rubber meets the road. That's what separates the men from the boys. So these are some things that I have learned from Scripture and from God and many things I'm sure you know too. But I just want to encourage you today. So turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Verses 3 and 4. It says he humbled you and let you be hungry and fed you with manna which you did not know nor did your fathers know that he might make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. And God will put you in a position of total dependence upon him. We're always in that position anyway, but sometimes God will put you in that position and teach you something, make you... Realize that you're going to make it, but you're going to make it through the power of his word, through what he says. So we need to hold on to God's word. We need to war with God's word. They said of Winston Churchill during World War II that he mobilized the English language and sent it into battle with his speeches. Well, we as Christians, we need to mobilize the word of God and send it into battle. And when the enemy tries to come, see, the devil, is he's always going to oppose the word. So don't be surprised when you're looking at your life and you're wondering, okay, why is this happening? I'll tell you why it's happening. Because the devil is trying to oppose the word. But how do you turn things around with the word? By believing the word, by speaking the word. The Bible says that the word is near you, even it's even in your mouth. So, it, so we have to... Believe it. And our confession, you know, the word confession in the Greek means to be consistent. It means to say the same thing. So when we maintain our confession, we're being consistent. And we're saying, you know what? God is good. God's going to honor his word. I believe it. The devil may try to throw something at you. Well, look at this. Look at that. What well, the Bible says, but this or that. And you say, no. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to honor his word. 
and my confession, I'm going to keep my confession pure. In other words, I'm going to be consistent. See, turn, turn to James. Turn to the book of James. Rob, I don't have this one on the, on the, on the queue, but I know you can look it up. Turn to the book of James. James, in verse 5, he's talking about wisdom, ask of God, and he will give it. In verse 6 says, but he must ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. How do we ask in faith? We ask believing that we already have received it. The Bible says that faith is the title deed. We receive, we receive it. So you pray and you believe that God has already appropriated everything in your prayer. You say, God, I know you're going to do this. I don't always know how. We don't always understand how God's going to do it, but we know God's going to do something. In fact, most of the time, we don't know how God's going to do it, and God always surprises us, but he always does it the best way. Isn't that good? God always exceeds our expectations because he always has the better way. His ways are higher than our ways. So to be double-minded It's the kind of halfway believe. Well, I believe in God, but remember years ago, Dad used to always say, goats, but. So don't be a goat. Well, I guess the Word of God says that, but. No, maybe instead of saying the Word of God says that, but, maybe we need to say, but God. <laughs> now, that's a good but. <laughs> Maybe this is happening, but God. So we don't want to be double-minded. We want to be single-minded so that we can receive everything that God has said. Now, we have to be careful about what we say. Go to James chapter 3, verse 6. James chapter 3, verse 6 says, the tongue is a fire. Now think about that. The tongue is a fire. Fire can be good. Fire can be bad. Fire can burn things down or fire can heat things up and bring warmth, right? I love my gas stove. It's the first time I've had a gas stove and it's a fire. You, you turn it on. And it's just there, bam. So fire, think about that. Fire can just, fire can just spring up in a, in a second. For good or for bad. So the tongue is a fire. The very world of iniquity, the tongue is set among our members, is that which defiles the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life and is set on fire by hell. Wow, think about that. The devil wants to... He wants your mouth. He wants to get a hold of your mouth, and he wants to use it to advance his agenda. Don't advance the devil's agenda. Watch what you say. When you speak not according to God's word, you are advancing Satan's agenda in your life. The angels are listening. And as you speak words of faith, God dispatches those angels on your behalf. 
But if you're not speaking words of faith, and if you're saying all kinds of stuff that you shouldn't say, then the, then the devil comes in. Great. Keep talking. So if you can't say, if, let's, let me say this. If you're in a situation and if you can't say anything good about it, just don't say anything at all. Don't advance the devil's agenda. Advance God's agenda. He said, for every species of beasts and birds, of reptiles and creatures of the sea is tame and has been tamed by the human race, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless evil and full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be this way. Amen. Amen. Does a fountain stand out from the same opening, both fresh water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brethren, produce olives or a vine produce figs? Nor can salt water produce fresh. Let God control your mouth. Allow the Holy Spirit. See, If you've got the Holy Spirit inside of you, then you don't have an excuse. Well, it's just how I am. It's just what I say. That is agreeing with the devil. Then you're saying, well, God can't change me. God's not big enough to change me. God's not powerful enough to change me. See, when we refuse to do God's word, then we're saying, God, you're not big enough. You're not powerful enough. You're not really Lord. So let us all, talking to myself too, watch what we say. I've learned, I'm learning more that it's so important when you're staring down the face of an adverse situation that you do not promote the devil's agenda in your life. Why? Because God is good. He's full of light. There's no darkness in him whatsoever. He's, he's the best thing ever. So our confession needs to be consistent. We need to say the same things all the time. And we need to believe them too. Because with the heart one believes. And with the mouth one confesses. So our confession needs to come from what's already in our heart. God's listening, the angels are listening, but the devil's listening too. And I've been in some situations where I knew, I knew that if I spoke the wrong words, it, that situation was going to go the wrong way. I mean, I, I just knew in my spirit, like, you know, like the Holy Spirit was saying, Clayton, hush, hush. And I have seen God come through time and time again when I stand on the word and I believe the word of God. He always comes through one way or another. It may not always be the way that I expect and it may not always be exactly what I want, but he always comes through. Every time. So you want to have power? Watch your confession. Don't be all over the place. Don't go chasing after every trend, every new book that comes out. Oh, this is the book that's going to set me free. No, this is the book that's going to set you free. Those books are great, but the Word of God is the book that's going to set you free. And it's the book that we need to hold on to and read. Don't just look at it on your phone every now and then. Don't just kiss the Bible and walk out the door. No, read the Bible. Apply the Bible. Believe the Bible. That what God says is true. There are over 3,000 promises in this book. Grab a hold of them. Many times we don't receive because, we're not, because we don't know what God has for us. But I'm telling you, God is good.
So we live by the word of God. That's how we live. When you go to the store, you just say, I'm blessed in the basket. And you're checking out. Even if, it, even, even if it's more than you want to spend, you just declare it. Hey, I'm blessed in the basket. You know what? God's going to find your deals. I mean, I, I've, I've gone to the store and prayed and things that I need. Many times they just happen to be on sale. Wow. That's God. That's keeping your confession consistent. No, I'm not perfect. I don't always say everything right, but I want to, and I'm learning, and I'm getting better every day, and you can too, because God is no respecter of persons. Now, I'm going to talk about a power killer, something that will zap your power more than anything else, turn to Galatians chapter 3. I'm sorry, Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. Now here's the situation. Gentiles were coming into the church. And of course, for thousands of years, the Jews had... All these strict laws and dietary laws so that, so that the Gentiles were coming in and they were not under those laws, but they were still devout Jews that were Christians that still wanted to adhere to those laws because it had just been a, a way of life for them. It had just been ingrained in them. So there, was a, so there was a lot of confusion sometimes for the Gentiles. What exactly do I do? What exactly do I not do? And so Galatians was written because basically what happened was Peter was acting like a Gentile when he was with Gentiles, but then when he was with a Jew, he was, he was acting all Jewish and like, you know, like you had to do all these things. And it was causing division and confusion in the church. In other words, he was trying to please men at the same time. Now, Paul says this, For am I now seeking the favor of men or of God, or, I'm, or am, am I striving to please men? If I, were, if I were still striving to please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. So being a people pleaser or being overly concerned about what people think. Now, of course, we all have a concern about what people think because everybody wants to be liked and everybody wants to be loved and everybody wants to be accepted. But know that everybody's not going to love you. I mean, it's really hard for me to imagine that, but I have to tell myself, like, you know, hey. I mean, right? Don't you just automatically think, oh, I'm the nicest person. I mean, everybody should just love me. I never say anything wrong, do anything wrong. I'm never offensive, right? Isn't that how we see ourselves? But our focus needs to be on pleasing God and obeying the word of God. Because if we try to please men, it's going to zap us of our power. Turn to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 2, Paul says, Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit, or are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? So then, does he who provides you with the Spirit and works miracles among you do it by the works of the law or by the hearing with faith? Sometimes, following the Holy Spirit may not be the most popular thing to do. When somebody says, oh, come and go see this movie with me, and you know it's not a good movie, and you have to say, I'm, I'm not going to go see that movie. Well, why? We went to see the Jesus Revolution, which was great. I encourage everybody to go see it. But they show previews, and... Th there was a preview of a movie, and it was about demonic possession, and it was so real. I thought, man. I mean, it was so real. It, just, it almost seemed like it was actually happening. And you know what? It might have been. We need to watch what we see. Watch what we do. Be examples. You might ruffle some feathers. 
If you say, well, I mean, I believe the Bible says that in the beginning he made them male and female. I, today that might ruffle some feathers. Are you going to stand in love? But that's what the Bible says. There's only two genders. Male and female, period. I mean, there's no other. That's it. But in today's society, unfortunately, that'll get you shot in some circles. Get on the news and say that. Oh, boy. But you know what? If I was ever on the news and they asked me, you know what I would have to do? I would, I would have to say it. You can crucify me. I, I've, I've got to speak the truth. It's not a popularity contest. I'm not here on earth to be popular, for people to love me. I'm here on earth to love God. And in the loving God and the serving God, God will draw who he, who he chooses around me for me to touch. We, not, we need to just get it out of your head. It may not always be popular to serve the Lord. It may not always win friends and influence people. But you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to serve God, and I'm going to obey him, and I'm going to please him because you know what? He's the one that decides my eternity. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go to hell. Because you ever, you ever burned your finger? Yeah, one little tiny spot. Hurts, right? Well, can you imagine? You know what? God doesn't want you to go to hell either. That's why Jesus came, so no one would have to go to hell. No one has to go to hell. All we have to do is accept the free gift of salvation. That's all we have to do. And trust him and believe him. So God doesn't send anybody to hell. Our choices, what we decide for our eternity. We're going to choose Jesus. We're going to take a hold and say, yes, Jesus, I want the gift. I want the free gift. Or are we going to reject it? Jesus has done everything that he can do. He's laid down his life. That's it. He has a appropriated everything that we need for life and godliness. Now it's up to us to take hold of what God has done. So if you want to stay walking in God's power, keep the word going before you. The word of God spearheads everything. In fact, Give me one example of that. 1 Kings chapter 18. Now this is a story. We're not going to read the story about the, the rain. I just want to read verse 46. And I want to point out something. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 46. Now this is when God said that it was going to rain. Elijah prayed and he, he saw the cloud. He told Ahab, prepare your chariot. But verse 46 says, Then the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins. Now, when you gird up your loins, you put a belt around you. Back in those days, they wore like a robe, and you would pull your robe up so you could run unhindered. So it said that Elijah girded up his loins and outran Ahab to Jezreel. But historians tell us that what this means is that Elijah, he didn't necessarily outrun the chariot. It meant that Elijah was running ahead of the chariot. So as we're walking with the Lord, Paul likes it to a race. As we're running our race, the word of God needs to be in front of us. Always in our minds, preparing the way as we walk with God. We always need to have the word of God. In other words, when we come into a situation and we have a conflict or something in the home, the first thing that we need to do is, okay, what does the word say? What does the word say? Katie and I get into a, a, a conflict, which of course we never do. But if we ever did, 
then I would go to the Word and say, okay, what does the Word say about this? You know, you're in a situation where you have to make a decision with your kids. Okay, what, is, what does the Word say? And you use the Word as your standard. See, that's the problem in our society. God's Word has been taken away, so there's no standard. So, yeah, you can have as many genders as you want without the Bible because there's no standard. There's, no, there's nothing. It's like in the book of Judges. There was no king in Israel because every man did what was right in his own eyes. There's no king, but where there's a king, there's order. There's standards. So we have to honor God's word. We we have to follow God's word. Proverbs 29, verse 25 says, The fear of man brings a snare, but he who trusts in the Lord will be exalted. Wow, isn't that good? Doesn't matter who wants to talk against you, but when you fear God first and you trust in the Lord, God's going to open those doors for you. Nobody will be able to stop it because God is on the throne. And we trust in the Lord. So one more point. I'm just going to kind of go into this point, and I may talk more about this next week because we're running out of time. Turn to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. Now, Isaiah, he had it rough. Well, let's just read the scripture, and then I'm going to explain. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted, with the train of his robe filling the temple. Seraphim stood above him. Now, these seraphim, these are not angels. These are seraphim. They're distinct creatures that are around the throne room of God. They had wings. There's nothing in the Bible that says that normal angels have wings. I'm not saying they don't, but when angels appeared on the earth, they looked like men. So these seraphim, these had wings. Seraphim, the word means burning ones. Six wings, and they were flying all around. I bet this was an awesome sight. Seraphim stood above him, each having six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. With two, he flew. Now, think about it. Think about it. The seraphim, this angelic, powerful creature, covered his face when he was around the throne of God because of the glory of God. Think about that. And they said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And this just keeps happening over and over again. The seraphim, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the Bible says that the foundations of the threshold trembled at the voice of him who called out while the temple was filling with smoke. I mean, this was an awesome sight. These awesome creatures had such respect and fear of God that even they covered their faces when they were flying around the throne room. The fear of the Lord, that's a whole nother subject. And what was, what was Isaiah's response? Woe is me, for I am ruined. When we come in contact with God's glory to some degree, we understand who he is and we understand who we are. I'm a man of unclean lips. I live among a people of unclean lips. Isn't that interesting? The first thing that Isaiah said, the first thing he targeted was his mouth. How important it is what we say. Preaching to myself too. It's very important. I am a man of unclean lips. I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And again, what Isaiah saw was just a glimpse Because you in your mortal body, you could not contain the full glory of God. So the only, we can only see God as he reveals himself to us in this natural body. I mean, we just get a taste 
of his glory. Just a drop, just a glimpse. God is so incredibly powerful that he has to reveal himself to us in limited ways so we can handle it. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is forgiven. Why? Because Jesus said, Out of the heart a man speaks. So in touching his mouth, God dealt with his heart. He said that your iniquity is taken away and your sin is forgiven. Now this is interesting He starts it off with, in the year of King Uzziah's death. King Uzziah was a very successful king. It was only the last 15 years of his life when he entered the temple, and he wasn't supposed to. He became a leper, and he lived in seclusion. But under his reign, Israel prospered. So him dying was a tragic thing for Isaiah. And I think what God was communicating to Isaiah was that a great king may have left the earth, but the king of kings and the Lord of lords is still on the throne. And I think what God is saying to us today is that there is no man-centered solution to fix our nation. We've got to have a God-centered solution. Only God can fix this, and our eyes need to be fixed on the Lord. I mean, we're, we're, the problems are too immense. Yes, it's important. We need to pray. We need righteous men and women to be in office and in governmental positions. Amen. We have a free country. Vote. Get the right people in. I agree with all of that. But the root of our problem is that we need God. And only God can turn it around. Man can't turn it around. And this is the message that God was speaking to Isaiah. See, when all else fails, you remember that the king is on the throne. When you don't know what to do, you remember that the king is on the throne. And he rules and he reigns. And this battle... This war that we're seeing in our nation, both within and without, is going to be won as the church of God draws close to the king. As we seek the face of the king and put our eyes on him and realize that he is the only one that can fix things. Think about your own life. No person could could fix you except God. And we're at that point where, okay, God, we need you. I mean, we're on, we see Russia and China. You know, China has begun to put defense army outposts all over their country, and experts say they're preparing for war. I'm not trying to scare you, but we need to seek the Lord. Because it's a serious situation. But guess what? In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, lofty and exalted. God is bigger than any problem. God is bigger than any dictator, than any world ruler. He rules over all, and I believe that the prayers of his people can change things in this country. And I believe that it will. Because I see the church rising up. There was a group of people at the Capitol yesterday, and we were all there. And yeah, it was freezing cold, but we were worshiping God, and God was doing something. And I know God was pleased with our sacrifice So every state capital is going to have that. Isn't that amazing? So you know what I say? This is, and this is a day of incredible opportunity. This is a day to look and pray and seek the face of God and see God move in extraordinary ways in your life. 
both in your relationships, in your, look, press in, in your finances. Don't look at everything. Just say, God, you're the blesser. I I believe you, God, that you're going to open up the windows of heaven over my life. I don't know how. I don't know when. But I know that when I pray that my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. The Lord says in the book of Psalms, the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He gives grace and glory and no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. We need to stir ourselves up with the word of God and say, I believe, God, that we're going to prosper in this hour. Amen. The church church is going to rise up and prosper. Amen. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless your finances. He wants to bless your marriage. He wants to bless your relationships. He wants to exalt your children. He wants to put the fire of God upon your household. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's what the word of God says. We need to put that in front of us and mobilize and say, yes, we want the fire. On our children, on our grandchildren, amen. We want to see this thing press forward. Because the kingdom of God is advancing. We're not retreating. We're not going back. But we're pressing forward, amen, to the prize. That needs to be our confession. I believe you, God. I believe increase. Hey, you need a raise? You ask God. God, I need a raise. I call it forth. I call it forth from heaven. I need financial increase. You speak it forth. You send the word of God before you, and you call it forth. You need healing in your body? You call it forth. God, your word says by your stripes, I've already been healed. I receive my healing right now. I'm already healed in Jesus' name. I believe there's going to come a day when I'm going to rip these contacts out of my eye, amen, and I'm going to see 2020, amen. Just declare it. Believe it. I promise you, you'll feel better. Don't you want to feel better? What's wrong with speaking God's word? Well, if it be thy will, that's a dead prayer. That's a dead prayer. There's no faith in that prayer. Pray prayers with it, have some faith in it. And don't look at what didn't happen. That's what that, well, that didn't happen and that didn't work. Forgetting the things which are behind. Okay, God, I don't know why this didn't work out, but I'm pressing on to you and I'm going to believe you. Amen. That's how you mobilize the word of God and put it into action. Amen. So this week, I want you to mobilize the word of God and you claim those promises. And no matter how you feel, no matter what it looks like, you speak the word of God over your life. You be single minded. You make your confession consistent. A consistent confession will bring down heaven. Amen. So just know. Put your big pants on this week. We all have to do that, right? I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to believe God. I'm going to trust God. I'm not going to tell God how he's going to do it. I'm just going to believe God. Amen? Amen. Let's just raise our hands for the blessing and just believe. Numbers chapter 6, verse 22. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and to his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the sons of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. So they shall invoke my name on the sons of Israel, and I then will bless them. So I'm telling you, this week, it's not a matter of, is God going to bless me this week? No, God's going to bless you this week. Amen. You're going to be blessed this week in Jesus' name. Amen. All God's people said amen. Let's just give the Lord praise. He is worthy. He is worthy of all the praise. He is worthy of all the honor.